fine so workflow rules the third type of business logic we have already talked about formulas and validation rules uh, now we are going to talk about workflow rule now what is a workflow rule workflow rule is pretty simple it is basically a rule where you automate some action okay where you can define a logic to automate some action so action based on logic for example um, you have you can have a workflow rule defined uh, in terms of whenever there is a new lead entered into the database an automated email should be sent to the lead okay a simple one automated action instead of you know someone manually sending that email what we can do we can automate that action that uh, you know which can be automatically sent to the uh, customer the same way we can think of uh, other stuff like uh, whenever some data is entered into the database some field of the record should get updated automatically right so some action which we can do automatically so with validation what was happening it was just validating the data right so with the validation we had a problem that uh, the old data was only getting validated all right and uh, it was not actually going and checking uh, you know or sorry it was not going and performing any action as such you no know? it was just going and checking the data whether it is valid it can be entered into the database or not and if it was valid it was entered if it was not valid it used to throw an error so that was the you know only thing that we had with the uh, validation rule but now with the workflow rule you can define your action so you can have your own action defined all right so that is what we are going to do with our workflow rule all right so now when i say action the next thing that comes to mind is what action are we talking about right so what action can happen right so in that we have a few things first is uh email notification that is one action which can happen second is uh, field update okay so when i say a uh, workflow rule what all actions can happen so there is an email notification which can be sent a field can be automatically updated assign task to user so a task can be assigned to a user automatically or an outbound message can be sent all right so these four actions can be performed they can be email notification they can be field update they can be automatic assignment of task or they can be an outbound message which is sent all right so these are the four different types of actions that we have for our workflow rules all right now we can define any one of them or multiple of the actions as per our requirement so in a workflow rule what are the things you what are the different components of the workflow rule while you are defining this rule you should have for a workflow rule first thing that you need is a rule criteria second what you need is an evaluation criteria okay third is action so three things you definitely have to define for your workflow rule one is the rule criteria rule criteria is what is the rule you know what is the criteria that you want to define for the rule like i said every time a new email is created right so your criteria for that email to be sent can be that email field should not be blank so that can be a criteria right uh, so that can be the criteria for the rule that e if the email id is there then send an email all right evaluation criteria is when do you want the rule to be evaluated when a record is being created or a, when a record is being updated all right so if you put the rule to be executed when a new record is being created then the email will be sent 
I'm just talking about the email example. You can set up any of these four actions. I'm talking about email because uh, that is what we were talking in the example that I took. So if we say that this uh, whenever a record is created, send an email. Okay, that can be one evaluation criteria. Other evaluation criteria can be whenever a record is created or edited, send an email. And then what will happen in the second case? Every time you go and make any change in the record, a email will be sent. Okay. So depends, you know, what is your requirement? So you know, some cases you would just want the email to be sent once when the record newly got entered into the system. One notification is more than enough. Some cases you want uh, to send a notification every time, time there is some change or modification. Uh, that is where you can go with the second approach. Okay, so that is the evaluation criteria part of it. So rule criteria is let's say email not equal blank. Evaluation criteria is um, here we have an option of created or created and updated. Okay, so you decide whether you just want to send an email notification when a record is created or you want to send in both the scenarios. Okay, action is send an email. So this is what we have at this point of time, right? So for a workflow rule, you just have to decide on three things. You have to define three things, rule criteria, evaluation criteria and the action okay what action you want to do right so obviously when you start defining the actions in an email there you have you will have an option of defining who will receive the email what will the email template and all that stuff so uh, i'll just show you an example and you will be able to you know understand it from there so um, and before this entire process starts only small thing that you have to decide is the object for which you want to define the workflow rule let's say when i say every time a new lead is created we want to send an email so my object in this this case is lead right so that is the thing got this we are clear on this all right so here we are Let me share my screen. Let's create a small rule. Let's go with the same rule. Whenever there is a new lead created, uh, automated email will be sent to the lead. Okay, to the email defined in the lead. Okay. So the option that we have here is go to setup, create workflow and approvals, and then click on workflow rules. All right, so the same setup uh, process you have to take and then go and say workflow rules. Okay, then click on continue here. So don't click on anything else, just go and click on continue. So you can just, you know, have a quick uh, read on this page which will give you some idea about, you know, what exactly uh, the different tasks are I told you these are the four, you know, different actions you can assign tasks you can do email alerts field updates outbound messages so you can just spend some time to read about that
Hello, hey all. can you all hear me? Yes. Sorry, I think I was offline for some time. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, you know, creating workflow rule, simple, go to setup, then go to create, click on workflows and approvals. Workflows and approvals. Uh, then go and click on workflow rules. And then we would just okay. Then we just click on the continue button and start defining a new rule. Okay. So what are the things that we have talked about? What are the things we need to decide before defining a workflow rule? Which object we are going to depend the rule for? Okay. So we can talk of leads or contacts, whatever. So we are going to define this rule for leads. Let's go and say, select the object as lead. Here it is. Then go to next. Then for the rule name, we have to define a name for the rule, which can be lead email rule. I mean, just put whatever name you want for the lead. Define on the evaluation criteria. I told you you have to decide whether you want to send an email uh, when a record is created or an email when a record is created and every time it's edited, right? So you decide on this, I would say, send this email when the record is created okay you have a third option which says created and anytime it's edited to subsequently meet criteria so not every time when it's edited only the time when it is edited to meet criteria which criteria the rule criteria which uh, we are going to define now uh, rule criteria for us is going to be email field should not be blank so for us it's going to be email not equal to null that's it. Let's go ahead and click on save and next. Alright. And then click on done. Oh, sorry. Before you click on done, you also have to define your actions. Okay. So where do you add the actions? On this step, you should say add workflow actions. So criteria is defined, object selected, criteria defined, now time for us to put some action into this. So what do we want to do? If that criteria is met, what should happen? We want to send an email, right? So just go add workflow action, say new email alert. Okay. So I want to send an email. You can give it any name, whatever you want. Pick an email template for that, alright? Because we are trying to automate the email process, we have to define an email template for that right so we'll just go ahead and select the email template so there are a few default email templates which are available if you want to create your own email template you do have an option of coming to the setup communication templates and come to the email templates right so this is where you can go and click create your own email templates as well right so you just have to you know, go and put the subject uh, line and uh, the email body of it and you have to decide you just want a plain text email template or an HTML which has some sort of formatting available. So that is your choice. Then you know decide on the email template. You can create. So I'm going to use one of the existing email templates, uh, default ones. Let's say this marketing product inquiry response. Now from here what we are going to do is we are just going to select the recipient so who is going to receive the email so 
the email should be sent to the email field defined in that record. So in the lead there is an email field, right? So you can send it to that email field. You also have an option of copying the email to five additional email addresses. So the email alert which is sent, you can put some email ID here who will be copied on that. Okay. So let's say when this automated email is sent, you want to copy your sales uh, rep on that. So that the sales rep is able to you know follow through using the same email. Let's say this is the email ID of your sales rep. And then go ahead and click on save. That's it. Done. The rule is created. The criteria is defined. Um, the action defined, and then you just go ahead and click on done. The last thing that you have to do before you can start using this workflow rule is activate the workflow rule. So any workflow rule that you create by default is not active. Okay. And why do we have this concept of activating the workflow rule? It's pretty simple because uh, sometimes you don't want these emails to work. Let's say you're uploading some, you know, 10,000 uh, records using the data loader, which is an old data. Okay. Now that's not the, the first time that you're entering the data into the system. That is an old data. You took it out for doing some sort of cleansing activity. Now that part is done. Now you are uploading it back into the system and you don't want the email to be sent. So at that time you should simply deactivate the workflow rule. So as simple as that. Hmm? So you have the option of activating the workflow rule or deactivating it the moment you want as per your requirement. Got it? All right. There is one more thing that we have here is when you when we talk about actions under actions we have two types of actions. One is an immediate workflow action. One is a time dependent workflow action. Okay, before I activate that, let's look into the time dependent action also. Time dependent action is something which will happen after the defined time. Right? So, uh, let's say the business says that, you know, when, somebody, when, when the record is created, we want to send an email after one day. We don't want to send the email on the same day. May, may happen. That may be your you know, requirement. Or, you know, after two days, you want to send one more email as a reminder. Alright, so that is where you have we have to define our time dependent workflow actions. Edit, add time triggers. So first of all, you will add a time trigger. So what is the time trigger? How much time do you want uh, to delay the action for? And then you define your actions. So you have the option of delaying your time. Let's say one day after the rule trigger or two days after or you can also delay it by eight hours after the rule trigger so you can delay the action by some time not just that you can also uh, say uh, let's say one day before some other date that is there right <clears throat> for an example if uh, you know uh, we, we go back to our uh, Campaigns. Sir, I have a question. Just one second. Huh? Uh, let me just complete and then I'll answer the question. Sure, sure. Is it related to this only? Then you can ask. Yeah, it is. Ah, so let me just give you uh, give one example that just came to mind, and then. Okay. Huh? So it is. Uh, okay. You know, for example, uh, the uh, this training event uh, application that we were designing. Think of it. Someone has enrolled for the training program. There is a training event or event start date. Right. If you want to send an email one day in advance before the start of that event, you want to send an email saying that, hey, uh, the event is tomorrow. One final reminder, okay, or the event or training program, whatever it is. Right. What happens? That is where you can use your workflow rule. All right. So there you can say one day before the event date. So that is how this time trigger thing can be used. For that, yeah. Ravi, go ahead with your question, please. So uh, actually, as you told, uh, you know, uh, depending upon the 
uh, time criteria, you know, the task will be setting the before uh, Whenever, yeah. trigger, right? Okay. So, uh, of course, we cannot use for the record updates and all, right? <laughs> so, because, you know, the system cannot know yeah, right. when the record is... So, systems, yeah. Uh, yeah. so systems are not supposed to be, you know, preempting things. <laughs> Yeah, so that will not work with the created date and all that stuff and that is the reason why I was talking about that. So I cannot yeah. say that uh, send an email two days before the record is updated because system will not know when, the, when it is going to be updated. But if you have a date field uh, where you know something like that is in you know, an event date or if you have a let's say uh, some, some contract uh, expiry date. Right? So you want to send an email automatically 30 days in advance that your contract is going to expire in 30 days, please renew. That sort of things can be done. Right? So for that, we'll have to have a custom date field. System generated date fields will not be able to help here because uh, you cannot have a advanced date uh, you know, uh, there. So that is the thing. So uh, now let's say, um, uh, let me say um, one hour after the room trigger date, for example. All right. This part is done. Now under this particular uh, time trigger, you can define more actions again. Okay. You can define more actions for immediate workflow as well, but for after one hour also. Let's say you want to send multiple emails to the client. Someone was enrolled. You just want to send him three, four, five emails. So you can do this from here. Have you done this? Please let me know if you have any questions, doubts. If you're all fine. All right, great. So um, <clears throat> now let me just activate this. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to activate this rule and then try it or test it. School leads. Click on new lead. Um, let me put my name here, put my email ID here. So the email will be sent to this email field. You remember we defined a recipient should be this email. So the email will be sent to this email ID, alright. So now the moment I click on save, there will be an automated email sent to just click on save yeah so here is the email that I have received. Thank you for your inquiry about this basically what was there inside that email template. But uh, this is the email that I have received. This is how it looks. Right. So this is how a workflow rule works. This is how we work with a uh, workflow rule. Alright. Clear with everyone. Please tell me if you have any questions or doubts here. We are all okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, what we'll do is, uh, I think uh, we'll just uh, you know keep our today's session till here. Uh, we'll do a slightly shorter session because uh, most of the people are uh, missing today. So, I don't want uh, too much to be missed by them. So, we'll uh, you know talk about another thing, which is approval process, which is uh, which you will understand better if you understand the workflow rule thing, alright. So it would be good if you, if we can you know, just go back and work with our uh, workflow rule and then we will come back to the approval process. In tomorrow's session we will start talking about reports, okay. And uh, the next session we will, uh, you know, after the reports and uh, dashboards, we will get back to the approval process thing, right. I just want you guys to have a day uh, to understand the workflow rule. Because approval process in a way is an extension of the workflow. In workflow what is happening, 
there is certain action which is happening and the story ends there like in this case an email was sent and that is what needs to be done in an approval process there is an email which is sent and after that um, you know you are um, kind of uh, you know once the email is sent after that it goes to the approver then the approver approves it or he rejects it and then there is another action which happens right so that's a you know bit of extension of an approval process so you understand approval once you start understanding workflow right so tomorrow we are going to take on the reports and dashboards and then again once we are done with the reports and dashboards we'll come back to the approval process all right so that is how the plan is yeah please tell me if you have any other questions apart from this anything you know not just workflow if you have anything related to the formulas validation something that we have done before that you can ask no sir uh, yeah sir, uh, actually uh, i think you forgot to upload the last two sessions is it yeah uh, the sessions are not available actually. Can you please upload as soon as possible? I would, I would definitely. So uh, last two when you say the Thursday and Friday thing, right? Yes. Okay. So I'll just go back no, and. There was uh, a, oh, sorry. Then, uh, there, not, not actually Thursday and Friday. It's uh, Wednesday and Thursday, I guess, because there is no session on Friday. Yeah. So fine. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to check that and uh, that will be done. So you know before uh, we uh, meet tomorrow, I ensure that should be done. All right? Okay. All right. It should have been actually done over the weekend, but uh, this weekend, you know how the it was. Everyone. So the start of the weekend I was not that well, and Sunday was a busy day. So that is how it is. Hmm? So I think uh, before we meet tomorrow, that should be done. Thanks for uh, the reminder. Sure. All right. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. Fine. Should be done. Okay then. I'll see you all tomorrow. Same time. Same link. All right. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, and uh, one more thing, Nikhil and Ravi Teja. I think I don't have your email ID, so you guys can drop me a test email on contactjitsing at gmail dot com. So in case you know, uh, the other day I had to uh, uh, inform that I'm not that well and I was no, I did not have your email IDs and all, uh, and other stuff also. In, in case I want to share a small document or something, just drop me a test email on contactjitsing at gmail dot com. Right? You can see it on the screen as well. Contactjitsing the lead I created, or I can just type it here. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you all. See you all tomorrow. Bye. Okay. Thank you, sir.